All right, we have Gojo in the Zoom here, and uh, we appreciate him joining us. It's uh, it's six oh nine where he is out in L.A. But Chris nice. Cody is also Ooh. back from the basketball. I course. am spitzing. And well, you smell. I mean, no, I don't. Do I? Let's like see. sweat? I'll, of course I'll, you I'll do. do. I'll do the old test. Yeah, yeah, it's not great. No. Uh, how do you feel, Chris Cody? How do you uh, feel? I feel better than I look. Looking up at my, I, I look like I just ran seventeen miles. You're very red. Um, yeah. It's just how I, you know, it's how I roll. If right. I get a little tired, the, fa- the face just turns beet red. Uh, you know, I tried to impress, shoot some threes. I should have just done it easy layups, but you know, I you have fun good out form. There. You I have did. fun out there. Yeah. That's all it's about. I shouldn't be surprised. You're you're obviously the best athlete on this show, no. which is not no, saying no, much. No, 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 he is. I think no. he is. I think I'm. No, a, we can have chess now. I think I'm a well-rounded. I, yeah. I just think I've always been a well-rounded athlete. Wait, like I forgot be, about Tony. Tony is outraged no, no, right no, now. He's on the IR. <laughs> Tony will beat me in basketball. I mean, I'm not if, outraged if we wanna, at all. If we want to have you a are. sport Everybody off, has special things mad. that they're good at. Right, but you're like, good at everything. I mean, Not everything. I have no. the biggest temper on this show, and that's a lot <laughs> because I'm on it. Sure, I've, I have never, a big So am I. Sure, if we want to do that, we can. I've never claimed to be better at basketball than Tony. I just claim to be decent at everything. most sports, yeah. But really good at golf. Yeah. And baseball. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair. Uh, let's bring in Gojo. Check out his show, Gojo, his podcast. Uh, and bowling. Brought to you by DraftKings. Uh, Gojo, did you hear the conversation that we were having with Chris Whittingham before, uh, right before you came on here? And ping pong. I did, yeah. I heard the last couple of days of Chris and Witty having, or uh, Mike and Witty having to try to kind of rationalize what went on in uh, Miami this season. I'm just impressed that Witty still thinks it's possible to complete a college football game in three hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> what, a, oh, what a time that would be. Awful. Awful. I'm sure. I mean, I mean you, you commentated on some of these games, so I, I can't even imagine the just soul sucking looking at the clock that the guy walks the out what? with the clock. Oh. Mm. That uh, that like, it says three minutes and forty seconds lo- worth of commercial break, <laughs> and it just happens so many times. There's so many commercial breaks in these stupid college football games. It's just so tedious. It's so tedious to go to a game. It's an awful entertainment product, and yet many many ten- tens of thousands of people do it around the country. Yes, yeah, so if you're Saturday. watching a bad ga- a bad team, it is an awful entertainment. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's go, not. I go for the tailgate. It's not like the game. The game is unwatchable. It is. Uh, it takes so long. If it's a long. bad team, yes. No. How are they doing in Iowa? I, I just don't. Oh, well, that's mean. a oh, again, man. Bad Iowa. Story. I bet that clock comes out and it is like Nirvana for them. Yes. I bet that thing comes into the red equation. Hat, look at and me, that Louis. No question. Up. Yeah. Well, it, it, so it used to be just a guy with a red hat who would put his hand up. He was wearing a red polo and a red hat. And when I was doing WVUM radio, I used to watch that guy like a hawk. For when he, when he walked onto the field, it's like, all right, we got to go to break now. But now the guy is holding a, a, a like a, a clock, timer, yeah. yeah, a timer that tells you. And so you're just sitting in the stadium watching whatever in stadium entertainment, the thing where they put the football underneath the three little helmets and they swirl them around. Oh, at Notre which, Dame, you watch videos of like what research project is like saving the world. And, really, and, like, that, that actually country. sounds entertaining. Yeah, you. Yeah, would they like do a that. great job selling the school on you that like one. That. It's really we, we impressive. We don't have any advertisements on our jumbotron. It is all just ads for Notre Dame. Uh, we have a uh, guess where where Sebastian's hiding in the football. <laughs> little show. I'm great at that game, by the way. Are oh, you guys great eat. at that game? We I'm do what we eat. do, Mike. Guys, we do what we do. Everyone's what we're good, good at. at that game. Okay? I hope you guys yes. know that everyone's good at that game. <laughs> no, I don't think everyone's good. What do you mean everyone's good at that game? You know who's not good at that game? Whoever is actually playing the game. The contestant, the bonehead that's playing the game. Exactly. And I'm just yelling. Two at mm. right. <laughs> are we all? Are, are we our people that will just like in the same two, two? It's what? two. Yeah. We're all that person, right? Yes. Always guess you the middle. To. Yeah. You have to try and be a good teammate on that one. Hey, I went to the uh, Dolphins Chargers game this last weekend, and one of the jumbotron things they did in between the commercial break was celebrity lookalikes, but it was the Game of Thrones House of the Dragon edition. And they put Joffrey Baratheon up there. And the guy who they put up as his doppelganger was way too excited about it. Oh, no. Which indicated that he just either liked being on the screen or didn't watch the show. Because anyone else would have seen that and been oh, horrified. Yeah. They at I least were like trying to get creative, which they've got to do because they're the Chargers. And no one was there to see them anyway. I appreciate so. the World Cup cutaways because of the world feed. If, they're, if they shoot a fan that's in the sands emotional and... Often you'll see that at the World Cup. They also see the feed in the stadium. So you'll have someone crying their eyes out 
And then they'll realize that they're on the Jumbotron, and then there's just like a, a coy little giggle afterwards. Yeah. Like, oh, gosh, I didn't, I didn't Me? know. <laughs> Me? Thank you. Uh, Gojo, Witty had a uh, an awful take this morning, and I want to get your thought on it. No, I know what Gojo's going to say about this, and I'm already pissed off about it, but go ahead. All right, so he thinks that Buffalo, he thinks there should be a dome stadium in Buffalo, and really, I think all cold-weather cities – uh, the stadium should be domed in the NFL. What do you think? Hell yeah. What? Being cold sucks. Yeah. Oh, Mike, stop Boo. it. Mike. Boo. It's especially if you're this Bills team. Like, I can understand historically if you'd think about it differently, but you're pace and space. You're the air raid Buffalo Bills. You Boo. want this thing to hum. Why the hell would you want to be bogged down by the elements? Like, I get it's cute what we're going to do this weekend, acting like Miami's going to have issues coming up in the snow and all that stuff. But if you're Buffalo, you don't want to be slowed down either. That doesn't benefit you in the way you built this team. I think and when being you, cold sucks. No, Mike, I think, well, that sucks. Yes, I agree pole. with you. Yes, just being cold suck. Um, <laughs> but, Mike, I do think when you have that quarterback who could play through those elements, I don't think they mind it as much, you know? I'm not saying they mind it. I'm just saying it's not conducive to this. Like, the Bills aren't a team that wants to flex and, like, put a bunch of tight ends on the field and get under center and do the things that we usually associate with that kind of football because Josh Allen and them might be able to handle it. But again, you want that thing to get up and go. You want this to look closer to Peyton Manning's teams inside the Dome in Indianapolis than you do some team that's going to go outside and just tighten everything down and grind the ball downhill at you. Like That's not who these Bills want to be. If you gave Josh Allen the choice, like he's going to say Buffalo because they think, the fans think, hey, we're Buffalo, we're tough, we play outdoors, we like the elements. So Allen would say, hey, I want to play in an outdoor stadium. But if he didn't care about the fan reaction, do you think he would choose a dome every single week? I don't know. Josh Allen's kind of an outlier. That dude's insane. Right. I feel like he'd choose the outdoors. I think he might choose the elements, yes. I'm just glad someone finally said the ultimate truth about it, which is that it is cute. It's cute. It's super cute. It's cute when it's it so knows. cute. It's cute. Oh, I mean, when, it's cute when, for us. Like when, when Scott Hansen goes to the Octo Box and and it's like there, you know, all, all the games look normal, but there is the one the snow that, game that, that's covered in snow. All the games, but then, some of the, but then, no, some but of also, my favorite <laughs> games as a fan have been in snowy weather in South Bend, Indiana. They all ended in terrible losses to like Louisville and Northwestern. But yeah, they were you very guys memorable. threw snowballs at us. Yeah, it was great. It was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Dicks. <laughs> Gojo, Maybe if win you the game then. Gojo, if you didn't like playing in cold, why did you go to Notre Dame? Right, because I was brainwashed from the time I was a little baby. <laughs> That's I had a fair point. Yeah, I mean, yeah. How much yeah. eligibility no do you have? I I'd like to introduce you to some folks. Yeah, God. Was that I, that's that's my favorite bit on the internet that people do when like you played football at any level is people come up to me when like the like some offensive line is depleted and playing bad. They're like, Gojo, you better be ready. So and so might give you a call. I'm like, brother, they didn't give me a call when I was trying to get a call. They're sure as hell not going to call me while I'm a sloppy 265 on my couch, Brilliant. mainlining some version of trail mix that I found with more chocolate in it. What happened, Chris? I, I don't like being in here. My mic's always on. This is just a different <laughs> setup for me. And I but was, you have to stay in there because you stink. You were surprised that we heard natural reaction. I like so, to just, so I get them? I mean, I why do like, I have to get them? I like to say the jokes right out loud before yeah. it, so that was me just, like, testing out my bro out, and then it just went over here. Here we are. <laughs> Thursday, Chris, sometimes can be a mixed oh, bag. There's an on-off button right in front of you. Ah, uh, I mean. the on-off. <laughs> <laughs> we got to give Gojo some context to what Chris Cody actually said. So, Gojo, down here in Miami, we call people broid, right? Which means brother, just in Spanish Bro and in English hell. version, right? So, Chris Cody says but it no, like it's this. It's not ahead. in Spanish. It's in English in a Spanish accent. Correct. It's, Gringo it's accented. Bro the way that you say Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of words that we take as a Cuban community in English and then make them Spanish. Yeah. It like, just seems like you guys connect over that a lot, and I want to be with you guys. I want to be like, broel, my broel. <laughs> no. There's no. You sound like Borat. <laughs> <laughs> my broel. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I have a research project that I can present oh, to you guys. Jesus yeah. I'm excited. Oh. I'm excited. Go ahead, present it. All right, so it's an NFL-related research project. Mm. So... Did you guys know that right now, 
three of the worst five teams in the NFL do not own their draft picks. So right now, the number two pick in the draft will go to Denver. It will not. It will go to Seattle. As it stands right now, the Denver Broncos currently are 3-10. and The number four pick would belong to the Detroit Lions via the Los Angeles Rams through the Matthew Stafford trade. The Lions themselves would be picking 15. But the one that caught me the most by surprise. I know this. Yeah. The number five pick in the draft right. would go to New Orleans, but it is to the Philadelphia Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles, one of the best teams in the NFL, uh, have the number five pick in the draft as it stands right now. And I actually went <laughs> looking for how they got this pick. Mm-hmm. So last year, they had picks 15, 16, and 19. They had pick number 15 from Miami for the Jalen Waddle trade. Remember when Miami moved down from 3 to 12 and then back up to 6? Six was Philadelphia. They gave up a first-round pick in the next year. 19 was their own. 16, they got from Indianapolis for Carson Wentz. And so they turned 16 and 19 into 18 in that draft plus a 2023 first-rounder, which is number 5 right now from New Orleans, and a 2024 second-rounder. They then turn number 15 into Jordan Davis, and they use number 18 to trade for A.J. Brown. So from Carson Wentz and trading down to allow the Dolphins to go get Jalen Waddle, they have Jordan Davis, A.J. Brown, the number five pick in the draft as it stands right now, and a 2024 second round pick next year. That's the research project. My head hurts. Are you done yet? <laughs> the Philadelphia Eagles, what they've done. It's pretty impressive, actually. It's Too crazy. Long, didn't read. Yeah. Dude, that Carson Wentz 2017 season may be the single most valuable almost MVP season in recent NFL history. No doubt. Yes. He like, did he did just enough to convince somebody that he is you. worth all that. Yeah, me, exactly. Right, and and the Indianapolis Colts who, who are going to give up another conditional second to another aging quarterback to go and try and fix their quarterbacking issues. But Philadelphia, what they did with Carson Wentz and in the overall to build a great team that still has future assets, which my guess would be is they'll take five and keep trading down and keep going back and keep letting this multiply. It's insane that they're this good with Jalen Hurts at 12-1 and one, and they still have the fifth overall pick in the draft as things stand right now. Do it on a bad team. <laughs> Tony, what's the matter with you? Oh, what I was going to say, the reason I was pointing to you during Witty's research project was not to make fun of anything, yeah. but just to tell you, because you've been beating this drum all season, the fact that Howie Roseman's a really, 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 really good GM. I think he might be the best GM in the NFL. And like what so. he's doing right now is a masterclass in stockpiling assets, knowing when to trade them away for very good pieces, and still having assets in the future, like what he said. Mike, there was no way. Like, when you were watching Jalen Hurts in college, and and I have been saying it's more about the team than it is Jalen Hurts, but there was no way that you could imagine he'd be this good, right? Like, it's it's crazy. I was actually having this conversation yesterday to that point because you guys heard, like, the Micah Parsons comments about that on Von Miller's podcast talking about is it the team or Hurts and why there hasn't been more of, like, the conversation around Jalen that there's been around Tua about the weapons and the way it helps. I think it's just – well, I mean, one, it's how they came into the league because to your point, Stu Gatz, yeah, no one would have predicted this, especially guy gets pulled in the second half of a natty, goes to Oklahoma, and even by the end of that season, people had kind of figured out the passing offense of that team. I think it was Mike Gundy that joked that it was essentially defending the triple once you got to play Oklahoma in the back half of that season because everyone had put a lid on what they were trying to do passing-wise. And so, yeah, from there until now, what Jalen's done has been like Josh Allen light as far as improvement yes. as an NFL quarterback? Yes. Yes. Chris, what are you doing I over was doing, there? I was just right? doing a Dan impression for the, <laughs> <laughs> for the five of us in here. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I want to hear it. Totally Chris. distracted. You're, no, here, we, you're here for the was, audience. It was just physical comedy. He wasn't. He was just flailing his arms. He wasn't, yeah. saying, he wasn't saying I was just doing his own doing thing. things that Dan does to us when other people are talking. Like, go, oh, you're next. <laughs> 
I thought you had a question for Gojo. <laughs> you, you, no, you're good? Okay. Mike, who would be the MVP? It, go ahead. <laughs> he's being such Should an I ass. Leave? I'm sorry. I mean, he's doing a show. He does a really good us. physical Dan. Like, his limited fake physical but Dan is, miming is, is incredible. Limited fake Dan body language. <laughs> with, with That's phone. a Suey nominee. He's the only one who's had the uh, the stones to sit in that seat this week. <laughs> I mean, but of course. Yeah. I, mean, be I was going to ask if the seat smelled, and then I realized Chris would have no way to tell right now. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. No, but that mic smells. I know it does, right? Lewis All right. <laughs> I was, really? I was so thrown when Dan took off his hat the other day. Has he been doing that more often lately? Mm. He did it? He's done it a couple times. Yeah, the last few weeks I've noticed because I, I had never really I'm seen his real. head before. <laughs> it was the same thing when Stugas took off his hat for our, our photo day, and I looked at the top of his head and said, I don't think I've ever seen this in my life. Right. And when you saw the top of the head, you realized why he doesn't wear a hat every day, right? Must be on the comeback trail. Must be feeling good. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so he's happens at, to he's on that pandemic Bomani. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, how has your hair grown back since you shaved it? Because I had a Keeps bald spot forever. What? Ah, Keeps in collagen. He drinks like a special shake like every morning, don't you? No, I I, I was not taking this hell. I battled back. Yeah. We we made a halftime adjustment, and I feel good about it. Mike, it looks great. Your keeps, hair Mike. looks great. Thanks. It does. Thank you very much. I did the foam. I did the pill. I uh, I did some experimental stuff from Brazil that I'm not too proud of. <laughs> and uh, I take collagen supplements and uh, okay. the, right, the right amount of mousse, too. I had the entradas. There's a little, you know, a little smoke and mirrors, but I feel pretty good about things. I thought you looked good with no hair. No, well, I appreciate it, but well, I did not. You never hair. saw him without hair. No, I saw him. him. No, it was, it was very bad. The worst part was not the bald look, believe it or not. It was when it was trying to grow in, and you didn't have enough coverage yeah. because you realize how much you're dependent on mm -hmm. certain stronger sectors being able to brush forward. <laughs> so there was a time there I'm like, I'm just a bald man. And then... The great ones, Welcome. the great ones say, yeah. not today. Not today, yeah. I learned that from Mark Jackson. Not today. So I, decided, I looked myself in the mirror, and I started attacking, attacking sectors three and four, and here I am today, not wearing a hat. Brian Erlacher's proud of you. I was this close to going to Turkey. This close. So I'm not Mike, rolling it out. Get out of here. <laughs> what do you mean you're so still many, not rolling it out? so many people with beautiful long hair. I would love to have beautiful long hair. Just a flowing mane. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I got sent a, a wig one time as part of a costume and put that thing on. I felt powerful. You still have it? Um, Not with me, no. I think I threw it away when I was in the move. It was uh, it was from Dr. Pepper. It was like the like the little sweet costume for right. Halloween. Mm -hmm. And it was a purple wig. And I was throwing that thing in a loose ponytail. I was having a great time. You felt like a different person is what you're saying. More confident. Yes. I mean, I was also wearing fishnet gloves as a part of the costume, too, which I think helped, too. Those huh. are weirdly empowering. But <laughs> did anyone else like fun, sexy time? Did anyone else like me listen to the Pablo Torre, uh, Andrew Luck daily thing? And it's like, what a moving, cool story. But throughout it, anytime Andrew Luck talks, I just laugh. Yes. Like he's sitting there. He's talking about, Thank like, you, you know, like, <laughs> big weight lifted off my shoulder. And I was just yeah. like, wow, like it's a moving thing. But I'm just chuckling because of how he sounds. That was a very good Did limited you, fake for me. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I try. Can you imagine how funny it had to sound Andrew Luck forcefully ordering dinner for people the way Seth talked about <laughs> in that article? I cannot yeah. picture that. Like, oh, she'll You're have the fish and uh, we'll get the... Uh, she'll have the ziti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We have three Andrew Lucks. That was it's amazing. They're, they're a wagyu. Wagyu. <laughs> Can all the Andrew Lux just talk amongst themselves about, for a minute? Please do it. Yes, yes. yes. Can yeah, you guys talk? Have a conversation. We'll have yes. a calamari for the table. Calamari for the table. <laughs> we will not be having the Brussels sprouts. No, no uh, uh, <laughs> Do you have an au jus? I would love an au jus. <laughs> yes, you would like that. I would. You, you would have an au jus. <laughs> that sounded like you. <laughs> Steam asparagus. Oh. Steam spinach. How's your polenta? What's Jack Doyle going to have? <laughs> Jack Doyle. <laughs> well, have I tell him to have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jack Doyle will have the tilapia. <laughs> you look like you can use a Greek salad. Basmati rice. That's not Andrew Long. <laughs> uh, I tried. I, I went one too far. We're trying. We're trying. Yeah. English accent. <laughs> Soup du jour. Good day, mate. What? What? That was just me doing witty. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It's, it sounds like Andrew Luck doing one of those thrown police voices that they use for like someone who's testifying under oath. <laughs> for, uh, Kyle, we'll have the foie gras. No, that's Stugatz when he has phlegm in his mouth. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, like a parfait. <laughs> Mike, I have to ask, since you were... It's a bit of a moose boosh. <laughs> part of the Mario Cristobal conversation, I feel like you probably have some takes on what was said here the last few weeks that we haven't gotten to because oh, Mike there, keeps derailing the, right the conversation. Okay, cool. Um, what what were your thoughts on on Witty's hot take about us not uh, of us going too hard on on Mike yesterday for his crystal ball well, takes? Yeah, I was gonna say so, Mike. Like, re- refresh for me. The take essentially was that you guys were glad you didn't make a bowl game. It's not a, and it's not it's, a take. Thank you, guys. It's Joe. not a take, and I appreciate everybody treating it as if it were an uninformed take. But it's not an uninformed take. I spoke to several people who would help make this decision. They wanted to get a head start on their offseason program. They felt like they came in late in the game last year. That was the doing of the. Uh, the program and how they handled the Manny Diaz thing. And they were reveling in the opportunity to actually attack recruiting. And it's bared out pretty well for the university. Everyone's saying what coach wouldn't want 15 additional practices. Well, if half the team is not coming back, why would you want to go through the, uh, the 15 practices? You'd rather use that time to fill those roster spots with personnel. I was stunned to hear it because I found last season to be a tremendous embarrassment but the program would have rather gotten a jump start on their off-season program and not had practice or bowl preparation standing in the way of that. Okay, so that's why the MTSU game happened. No, no, the MTSU game happened because this this coaching staff coached that game arrogantly, not well, and they failed to connect to these players. And once this team faced adversity, a lot of the players checked out and it would have been better if they just left the program, but they didn't. They just stayed there. They festered, and all the problems metastasized over the course of the season. It was not I, – I don't understand what it is that people do. I, I know I sound offensive, and maybe that's doing it, but I sound offensive because I'm conceding every single piece of well, criticism. Well, I think that that's it. No matter what you say, um, you're – in a bad spot like you're backed into a take corner because if you say like these are all the reasons why i'm disappointed unhappy everyone will point and laugh and be like haha you're you but should also be. no but, but if Mike, you're like but I, if, no, hold you on defend, a second. if you defend the coaching staff it's like well yeah you're just in the pocket of the coaching staff. But, I'm not, I'm not, but the thing is i'm not defending the coaching staff i'm just trying to provide insight as to what they're thinking and what their process i think last season was a huge stain on the program and it showed a lot of warts and it showed a lot of limitations. I concede all of this. I'm just trying to give insight on what they think the approach is to turning things around so far, given their approach, they're actually checking off some boxes to lay the foundation to be successful. I don't know if it's going to work. I do know that he's going to get the talent right. And typically as witty outlined, that usually does turn programs around when you get the talent, right? Yes, but Mike, it's this is why you're getting the blowback that you're getting. It sounds like you're making excuses for Crystal Ball for doing like a basic part of his job, which is get along with the players that you have. Like it's a figure huge it failing. out. Get it's, along with the players that you have. It's a huge failing to not connect with these players. He is he's got his limitations in that and can only really make it work with a certain type of player, and those are the players that he's targeting, and those are the players he's helping find new landing spots. Gojo, I have, don't a, fit. I have a question for you because you were at Notre Dame during the Charlie Weiss to Brian Kelly regime change. And there were the, <laughs> there were times when Brian Kelly said, you know, he made a comment about my guys, which was kind of uh, not taken well. And there were players that Weiss recruited that kind of went to Weiss when he had, when they had problems. And then, you know, there were certain things that happen when a coach takes over and there's there's kind of a hostile takeover there. Like how did the team navigate that? I know it took a while for the for the team to actually win, you know, more than 10 games a season after Kelly took over, but how did the chemistry work out between his recruits and Weiss's recruits? Yeah, I mean, it really wasn't like any chemistry be- between recruits, but there is that like acute awareness of being treated like a hand me down or feeling like you're a hand me down or that you're not wanted, which is like, you know, the ironic part is when you look at the team in 12 that actually ended up going to the title, there were a lot of guys that were holdovers from our recruiting classes under Charlie Weiss that were really integral parts of that roster as a veteran. And so that is the challenge for the coaching staff because you got to think they're trying to come in and preach the message that Mike talked about, right? Where you're trying to set this new foundation and you've got a way of doing things. To Mike's point about Mario, that was the same with Brian where – 
the biggest advantage he had was coming in and knowing what he wanted right away and knowing how to lay that groundwork the way you did everything day to day, the way you organized a locker, the way you organized an offseason program, the way you organized, the way you went about coaching and acquiring talent. But there is that fine line of also having to bridge the gap and in a limited time, be able to figure out who the leaders on your team are. And I think that's the other tough part is when you come in as a coaching staff, what you see in the offseason program and then what you get when football starts being played are two very different things. Like the guys that pop in shirts and shorts are not always the guys that are going to pop once you put pads on and you figure all that out. And even in spring ball, it's not a perfect like it's not a perfect look or a perfect summary of what the player is going to be like that. And so I think it takes you a little while to kind of learn the leaders and learn the important people on your team. And that could be some of the disconnect for any coaching staff going in. It's why when you look at what Marcus Freeman at Notre Dame did in his example, he'd been in the locker room for 11 months prior to taking that head coaching job. He knew the pulse of that team. He knew the leaders of that team. He knew he could go to in that locker room. And to have that locker room already have such a strong foundation anyway was such a, I think, a big part of why they were able to turn things around really quick. And for Mario, you are trying to come in and identify who are my leaders who are also my best players and do that on the fly as you go through a season where you're an imperfect football team and an imperfect roster. Yeah, it, it allowed for people on the roster to ascend and succeed on the field. Cam Kinchins became a, a first team All American. I would say, as you're seeing players leave Brian Kelly's LSU because after a season they realize it didn't work. And I've I've had the, these discussions with several former players. No one really from this new transfer era, and their perspective is always fresh and and deeply appreciated and it's always coming from the perspective of someone that toughed it out made it work assimilated to a new way of doing things and has a good story to tell i would i would just counter that always and they always heard me respectfully that it's a totally different time now you would have been far more likely to check out if you realized that you could leave and not have to sit out a year if you had that portal that was so accessible to you, if you were being tampered with the way that players are being tampered with now that the portal is one time, guilt-free, no penalty, you don't have to sit, you have a locker room full of people that check out, and you don't have the buy-in for someone to actually, because you don't have the sitting out a year to hold over them, you have people that are just deucing on an entire season and being negative forces there, so a bad season can turn even worse in this era. Yeah, that's the one thing I and you're right that I couldn't account for because even in our locker room, like if there were guys that didn't like how they were treated by that staff versus how they had been treated by the prior staff, because you do you like the hierarchy completely changes. Like when I was getting ready to, uh, so my sophomore year was 2009 when Charlie Weiss was still the head coach and our offensive line coach at the time, he and I really saw eye to eye. I had done really well under him. And the talk going into that spring was, all right, you're going to have a chance to compete for the starting job. Like you're going to be one of the guys that we roll out there. And then all of a sudden you fast forward and new staff comes in, completely reshakes the pecking order. And now all of a sudden, not as much in that kind of conversation. Now ample, you know, ex extrapolate that out to, 100 plus guys on a roster who aren't being told what they like but back then if you sat you either had to go if you transferred you either had to go down a level or sit so we didn't really have that many guys jump ship and part of that is you know part of the early message it was easy to buy in on with brian kelly like he got things done for us training table wise moving study hall like all the little things around a program that you see coaches try and tinker with when they come in especially now because so many of these top end programs are so better resourced that they can provide some of the things you may not have been getting under the prior staff or hitting the right buttons there that play with, you know, fan base, alumni and all that stuff. So it, it does make it enticing to stay because there is some sort of hope within there. But now when you've got all these other options and to Mike's point, all these other suitors and other players, they're going to do that. Like, I think that's probably going to be the biggest thing as people talk about, you know, the recruiting that Jimbo Fisher and other uh, and other people uh, kind of brought up or that, you know, people got, uh, no, it wasn't Jimbo Fisher. It was, um, it was at uh, Pitt uh, getting uh, okay. angry about people recruiting other players. That's going to happen on the player level for a long time. Like that's going to be the thing that's impossible to at track. an unprecedented level right now. And you, you have players already planning their exit that are just sticking around because they know they, they can leave penalty free and you have, Bad agents that can work against a, co a, a coach that's so reliant on culture. It's just a different era now when you don't have the penalty of having to sit out a year. The wild thing to me, though, Gojo, is how some of these coaches succeeded in year one. Uh, Lincoln Riley was able to bring his 
was able to bring his quarterback, but you you talk about Brian Kelly. He won the SEC West in year one, which is insane considering it's the SEC West. What do you think allows him to have success in a, in a place like LSU where maybe Mario Cristobal failed? Well, I think it's interesting to look generally at a lot of the first-year coaches that succeeded because I think a lot of those places when you walk into, and usually is the case, like I look at Oregon, you walk into veteran offensive lines and you get a veteran quarterback that tends to lift, raise the ceiling on it. With Mario, that's going to be one of the toughest parts about Miami is – remaking it in his mind up in the trenches because that's what can instantly raise your floor uh, raise the floor of your football team but for Brian it's interesting I always said the best thing that he did was understand where his feet are you look going back to you know from Grand Valley to Central Michigan to Cincinnati to Notre Dame everywhere. different resources available to you everywhere like he didn't have an O-line and a tight end room that were chock full the way he did at Notre Dame so he had a bunch of freakish receiver talent and a quarterback that was a really strong dual threat that was kind of able to bridge them until that quarterback figured out how to get those receivers the ball and then defensively Brian's I mean Brian's got more talent on this team probably overall than he ever had had with us at Notre Dame top to bottom. I mean, that's just how that LSU program recruits itself basically at this point. So he's always been a really good coach. Whatever people's misgivings with him have been along the way, the guy can coach football and he's been handed a cupboard with a ton of talent that's right in his backyard that I was not surprised he made work sooner than later. That was the least surprising thing to me was that he figured it out. Now, the fact that it happened to work enough to get him to the SEC championship game is partially circumstance, but a lot of it is great coaching and great players. Like football is a simple formula, especially in college to that point. I have to break up this great Hold conversation. On. I have a child in the studio just, with uh, me. Can we just imagine that saying a lot when um, I'm saying it? Imagine moving into a house and the cupboard is full. <laughs> Man, what a delight that would be. So Chris, Cody, what a surprise. Uh, yeah. Chris Cody and I now Mike, this is great. Chris Cody and I were maybe going to play golf tomorrow with a sponsor. Right. And uh, it got postponed. It's delayed a week. So I wrote on a card to him. Do you want to play anyway tomorrow? And Chris responds with a big smile and a quick yes. And he thought the anyway was Augusta. Well, he wrote in so he thought what I wrote down, do you want to play Augusta tomorrow? He, 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 I've been trying my entire life to play Augusta. You think I would do it and take you? Your Y looks like a G. Well, I'm telling you, <laughs> show the room this writing that you wrote. It looked like, do you want to play Augusta tomorrow? Chris, and I are was you like, high? I was like, sure. I'll, I'd love to play Augusta tomorrow. So would my dad. <laughs> it's like, You're having a sloppy morning, aren't you? A slorning, yeah, for sure. Jesus. <laughs> I like the idea that after all of this time, that's how Stu Gotts would just slyly tell you he's getting to Augusta. That's what I was thinking also. <laughs> right, but, I was right. like, wow. I he, would announce it. <laughs> I saw him writing yeah, down. I've been the, that quiet about it, Mike. I saw you writing down the question, and I was like, is he going to ask for approval like he does with Dan? Like, wow, he's writing down a question. He's going to ask me. And then yes, it was I, just, <laughs> yes, I wanted your approval <laughs> on a question for Gojo. <laughs> I was like, Augusta, yeah. Gojo, we need to ask you about the most important thing happening right now, which is not college football. It is the trailer for MILF Manor that came out. Oh. Um, what What is the twist? Wait, hang on. What What is this? Oh, so, oh, well, Witty, uh, like, essentially they ripped off an old 30 Rock sketch. Um, I don't know if you've seen the 30 Rock MILF Island sketch. No. But apparently TLC has decided to create a show where eight uh, MILFs, go to an island uh, and try and find love with young men half their age. And the twist in the trailer is they're introducing you to these like 49-year-old fitness instructors or whatever the job is, and they're showing all these shots of washboard abs of young men. And then at the end, they've got the line full of MILFs, and they're all looking at the guys they're getting introduced to. And the one mom's face kind of drops, and it's like, oh, my God. And pretty much everyone believes it's their sons and that they're going to be forced to try and go after the other MILF sons during this process. This is the learning channel TLC. This is happening on the learning channel to show sweet summer a lot child, of, Roy. There's a lot of learning, right? I mean, <laughs> life lessons, Roy. Great teachers. <laughs> Gets it. Are you going to be watching MILF Manor? Absolutely. My how, thing is, how is does like one watch TLC. That's a that's a good question. Like I assume I'm going to need to buy another you get a, you streaming get platform. A, you get a cable channel? Is that what you're asking? Like, where do you get it? How yeah. do you get it? Uh, YouTube TV? I mean, basic TV. Hopefully it's on Hulu. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just worried about any son that would willingly sign up to go on a dating show with their, like, 
admittedly MILF mother. If you have a MILF, do you ever acknowledge that you have a MILF? No, because no. it's like what people you're say, like, your own if mom you're great, is hot. you don't have to say it. Other people will say it for you. Yeah. If you've got a MILF, other people will tell you early and often. It's got to be an awkward situation. What, to have a hot mom? Yeah, I think so. To have a hot mom who's trying to have sex with the guys you're living with on an island? It yeah. be awkward. Well, no, just having a hot It'd mom just be the shouldn't Jets be locker awkward. Room. <laughs> that part shouldn't be awkward. It's the part Mike's talking about that, that would right. make it awkward, I right. think. Right, but it would yeah. also be awkward if all your friends are talking about how hot your mom is all the time, I would think. I mean, I've got all my media friends talking about how hot my dad is, so how do you wow. think I feel? <laughs> he yeah. is hot. He can get it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Gojo, we appreciate it, man. Thanks, guys. What are you thinking about, Roy? Uh, they were talking about uh, Wayne Rooney in here boxing somebody. I was like, wow. <laughs> hmm. Weird matchup. KSI is like the big like YouTube star in England. and He's boxed Logan Paul, and now he's apparently he wants Wayne Rooney, who is 5'9". On a good like day. A he does. Like Lenny Dykstra. Like yeah, nails. yeah, so, yeah. Top five fire hydrants in sports history. <laughs> <laughs> Kirby Puck is, well, Kirby Puck is more of a bowling ball than he is a fire hydrant. Put it on the bowl. Is Kirby Puckett more of a bowling ball than he is a fire hydrant? I think Roy's right. Yeah. <laughs> Who are? <laughs> now I want to discuss fire hydrants. That's all I want to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Tyreek Hill fire hydrant. No. He, he's built, yeah, he's built like. Tariq Hill is not a fire hydrant. Yes, he is. No, he's not. He's a cheetah. He's a Jim Klein saucer is a fire hydrant. <laughs> he's built, and no, I'm with Tony. He's Tyreek, built like a fire, is like a fire no, 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 no. Woody is dead on. Jim Klein saucer so we need slow is a people, fire is what hydrant. You're saying. Yeah, just like thick, yes. thick legs, have, thick calves. Have you seen Tyreek Barkley. Hill in person? No, I've not. Saquon. I, I, Barkley, I must admit, Barkley. I've not Saquon looked at his calves fire before. Bonafides on seeing Tyreek Hill in person. Look at this guy. Mm hmm. He's 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 just like built like nobody I've ever seen. Right? You're saying Saquon is a fire hydrant, right? Yeah, he yeah, is. exactly. Right. That that is right. athletic fire hydrant. Hmm. But, but is Kirby Puckett a bowling ball? Yeah, I was. was. Yes. I have I have no yeah, perspective for what Kirby Puckett's f physique is. Oh, you're gonna have to look it it's up. It's bowling ball. He, he played baseball in the early '90s. Yeah, yeah. Chris, you're agreeing. Look up that Twins team. Does Kirby connote bowling ball? I think he was a bowling ball. I mean, he could also be. If you just said fire hydrant, I probably would have agreed with that too. Same. Mm. Yeah. Is Kirby yeah. short for something? for that. Though. Is Kirby short for something? Kerbert. <laughs> do you know that? Like, do you know his that? reaction <laughs> after leads me to believe he doesn't know that? <laughs> no, but it sounds like from you? <laughs> it's a great guess, and I wouldn't rule it out. Kerbert. Well, Kerbert it's because Puckett. like, have you heard that Scooby Doo's <laughs> real name is Scoobert Dubert? That's not true. That can't be true. I don't know yeah. if you're telling the Scoobert truth. Scoobert Dubert. Scooby Doo. There's no way. Let me look at him. I'm looking up yeah, Kirby Puckett right lying. now. <laughs> I think he Hold just on. made all that up. Ezekiel Ezekiel Elliott. Scooby Doo is actually. What uh, about him? A <laughs> fire no, he's a fire hydrant. Oh, no, no, no. no, no <laughs> you no. forgot already? Robert Newhouse is the ultimate fire hydrant. Mm. Now he's a late '70s, early '80s Dallas Cowboys fullback. But look at him up. Uh, look him up is what I was trying to say. That is the ultimate fire hydrant. In is the Zonk? history of sports. Is Zonk a fire hydrant? No. I feel like Zonk is too tall. Zonk was tall. More for of a me, bowling ball. For me, the modern day, it's not even that modern anymore, but Lorenzo Neal wow. for me oh. was a fire hydrant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Kerbert. It's, it's just Kirby. <laughs> it's just Kirby. <laughs> Kirby is just a name. I got another one. What's Austin Eckler? Ooh, Austin Eckler. He's a bowling kind of a, ball. He's kind of a fire hydrant, too, though. Yeah. I a lot of these guys are, like, in between. I would say that, Ooh. yeah. Austin Eckler, to me... He's like four inches of height away from being an Adonis. Yeah. But he's not tall enough. Ooh. Right. Yeah. He's he's incredible. Like his physique, yeah. the way that he's put together is it, insane. It's it's cool, like because you can watch the Chargers and then you can like be forced into rooting against the Chargers. Mm. And then you have to watch Austin Eckler get three more yards than he should every single time that he touches the Low ball. Man wins. And yeah. it's like you you get it. Like you understand how he is this good. And also a God bless football regular. He is. Uh, what's interesting about Austin, there are many things that is interesting about Austin. Austin, he is very self-critical. Austin doesn't think he's playing well. Like he thinks in games in which he's scoring game-winning touchdowns against, I think it was the Raiders, 
He doesn't think he's playing well. He doesn't think he's having a good season. I think he's having a good season. It's amazing to hear how self-critical he is. But he, also a he, fire hydrant. He, he he doesn't think that he's having a good season. He's on pace to like crush the receiving record for for running backs. I know, and he thinks he's not doing enough. I mean, seriously, that's what he, he says to like, us. Like it's thirty-seven weird. touchdowns last year. Like he had a th- like, I think nineteen or twenty some odd touchdowns last year. So what's DK Metcalf? He's obviously uh, he's, not a bull. I know he's yeah. tall. He's he's just like. Do we have? He's any- in Adonis. I think, I, he's in Adonis. Yeah, he's in Adonis. He's in Adonis. Uh, His Adonis. AJ Brown, um, mm. Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas. Healthy okay. Michael Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. I actually get why Austin Eckler doesn't think he's having a good season. I think his rushing is down. He only, yeah, right? he only has one 100 rushing yard yeah. game. Yeah, but he talks about like missing blocks, and he's just very self-critical. Like the game he scored, the game when he touched down, he wasn't thinking about that all week. He was thinking about the blocks he missed and mm. a catch that he dropped. A little look at me, Louie. When, someone, guy, though. when right. somebody who's You're amazing right. at something yes. is just like, oh, I could have done this one thing better. It's like, all right. Relax. I've got another fire hydrant. <laughs> Debo Samuel. Oh. Fire hydrant. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I don't look at Debo like that. No. No? No, not a fire no, hydrant. No, I, I, think, I think you're mistaking, like, fire hydrant connotes thick. Mm. And, like, I don't think that Debo. Mike, sure. Who in sports do you connotes a fire hydrant? That's like, um, it's like Maradona or something, right? Ooh, it's good like shout. Who's like, it's like five, six. Like Dijkstra. Two, ten. We Even started with Dijkstra. Ta- no. yeah. Dijkstra at the end was pretty jacked, but but he, at the beginning, he was a little wiry dude. Yeah, I guess. It's got to be, a, it's got to be like a, uh, it's like Bartolo Colon. The game started with Tyree That's Kill. bowling ball. Though. Tyree yeah. Kill is yeah. where the game started. Yeah. Bowling ball. Bowling. Yeah. More, more like wrecking ball, actually. I was thought you uh Mike, do you remember Robert Newhouse fullback for the Cowboys? No. 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 He's the ultimate fire hydrant. <laughs> well, Zach I mean. Thomas. Mm, well, Zach, Zach Thomas. Yeah, bowling Zach. ball too though. Mm. More bowling know. ball. I, I think uh, there's I think yeah. I think there's a height a height requirement on fire hydrants. How about NBA fire hydrants? I, again, Ooh. I don't think that exists. They're too tall. Too Vinny tall. Johnson. Marcus Smart, fire hydrant. No. No. Mm. Too tall. But it's the NBA. <laughs> I know. The there, there, are, there are no he's fire six, hydrants. He's what? Six Maybe three? Like, I would say Muggsy Bogues. Nah. No, what do you mean? No. He's he slender. slender. He's yeah. slender. Yeah. I'm talking You're about giving th- me Debo Samuel. Yeah, but you say Spud Have Webb you seen next? him? Kyle Lowry, fire hydrant. I haven't seen That'll him. That'll give you. Kyle Lowry. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. going to get? That's when he's in shape, though. Chuck Hayes, When he's out of shape, he's a bowling ball. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what Mike sure Mike sure seems to have his fire hydrants a little overweight. I I I'm not playing it that way. I'm thinking over, if you're overweight, you're more like a bowling ball. Yeah. So right. he's thinking like I think I'm fire thinking hydrant short. Like small I'm thinking I think a fire hydrant is short and yes, jacked. Yeah. I agree. Austin yeah. Eckler, Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill, no. Tyreek Hill's me? not a fire hydrant. No. No. <laughs> Austin Austin Eckler, yes. Tyreek Hill, no. Ah, Tyreek Hill's too. He's too fast. A fire hydrant is, fast, is though, not Mike. like a. That's the thing. We're not doing fast. It's, we're just looking move. physical build. Yeah. But but I'm saying if you are fast, that eliminates the oh. you from being a fire hydrant. Yeah, maybe. Mm, right. I'm with yeah. him. Yeah. I don't right. know, man. Charlie O'Brien. Usually the catches are more of a. Rick Cerrone. Pudge. <laughs> Pudge is a fire hydrant. <laughs> oh yeah, Pudge. Yeah. Oh Pudge. Yeah. I mean, that is Robert fantastic. Rodriguez. I don't know. Tiger's pudge? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> fish, got, how about got, the fish yeah. pudge? Yeah. No, that's steroids pudge. That's different. Yeah. So, so we're pudge. talking about Rangers no, pudge. No, steroids then. pudge was fire hydrant right. pudge. Yeah, Tiger's pudge right. is not fire hydrant. Yeah. What about Rangers pudge? Fire hydrant. Mm, there you go. Yeah. Fire He's a fire yeah. hydrant. Yeah, yeah. 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 Or the yeah. Molina brothers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Molina yeah. Brothers. Yachty yeah. for sure is, yes. is a, you think is Yachty, a fire hydrant. I was going to say Benji, the more. Benji is a I, more fire hydrant. Mike, Mike, seems to re- Mike seems to really be thinking about this, which is great. I am. <laughs> I am. It's not what I thought I was going to be thinking about it at seven in the morning, but it is now. Sorry. I think Yachty, I think there are certain guys who are eliminated from fire hydrant status because they're too tall. Mm. You know, uh, what's like, the cutoff? Yeah, like, I don't. I don't that. know, but it's it's under six. It's way under six feet. Yes, unless 5'11"? it's like the how tall is Kyle Lowry? It's I, maybe it's relative Ooh, to the other hydrant. people in the sport you play, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Kyle Steve Lowry Brown, might be like. six feet tall, but mm. compared to everybody right. else, he looks like a fire hydrant. You didn't say right. Maurice Jones Drew? MJ. 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 He's a bowling ball. He's a bowling ball. Guys, he's a bowling ball. Come on, that's crazy. He's a bowling ball. He's a bowling ball. I could bowl him down an alley. I mean, I could. I don't think he could. Stats wise, Eckler and Tyreek Hill, same size, 5'10, 200 pounds. Yeah, but Tyreek Hill is too fast. I know, but stature wise, why is one a fire hydrant and one a bowling ball? It's because a fire hydrant can't leave everybody else in the dust when he runs a go route. Like, that's that is counter to the concept of a fire hydrant. But Austin Eckler can. But not like Tyreek Hill can. No one well, can. I mean, nobody the, has the fastest that speed. guy in the league can't be a fire hydrant. Mm. That's impossible. Mm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Agree to disagree. Right. Oh, wow. Agreed. Yeah, wow. It has to be a cheetah. I mean, it's. All right. All right yes. guys, bring the temperature down. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Temper on this guy. All right, Mike. Let's get to uh, let's get to the uh, stat of the day. Start of the day. Start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. The stat of the day is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. What's Darren Sproles? Fire hydrant. Scatback. Scatback, yeah. yeah, yeah. No doubt. What was Bob Sanders? Ooh, Ooh, Bob Bob. Sanders, wow. Tough as nails. Someone just Googled shortest football players. Uh, That's exactly what I did. Heavy hitter. Steve Atwater. Ooh. (laughs) Eric, uh, Wett, Eric Weddle. New game. I don't know. I don't know. I got to think about this. Barry Sanders. All right. Bowling Here's ball. your stat of the day. Mm. Uh, Luka Doncic. Doncic? That's it. No, right? Doncic. 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 All the ICs Luka. are itch. <laughs> Luka unless, and the Unless Mavs. they play winger for the U.S. Men's National Team. Yeah, that's something different. <laughs> Luca and the Mavs lost to Cleveland last night, but last week he got his sixth triple double of the young season. It was the 52nd triple double of his young career. That means the 23 year old Luca has more triple doubles in 289 career games than any of the following entire franchises has in their history the Utah Jazz, Memphis Grizzlies, Orlando Magic, Charlotte Hornets, Toronto Raptors, Minnesota Timberwolves. New Orleans Pelicans, L.A. Clippers, and, and I could not believe this, the <laughs> Miami Heat. What? Isn't that wild? I feel like the stat could have just been Luka's 23. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> He's only 23? He's 23. He's a full-grown man playing Eurobasket for Real Madrid. At like, yeah, at like 18 or 19 at years 18. old. 18, yeah. Yeah. Killian Mbappe is 23. Oh, wow. Bowling Get ball? out of here. How tall is he? He's he not is, bowling He's ball. not tall. He's a fire hydrant. No, he's not. What? No. no he's is Messi? No. No. Th- no. There is Maradona, I told you. If you want if you want a football player, it's Maradona. It, those don't exist really outside of Jordan Shakiri. Those don't exist. Oh, wow. Jordan Shakiri. Pull up a picture of Jordan Shakiri Shakiri's. right now. I'd be happy like, to. He is both. Mike called him Jordan. Right now? He, he is both incredible. a fire hydrant Jordan. and a bowling ball. If one can be both. Bushy. Jordan Shakiri, X H oh, is how you start that. X H E R D A N Shakiri. It would have taken me a while to get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To, even, to even get you to a stage where like Google can correct you <laughs> on what what you right. were thinking. X H. Yeah. Oh, X H. But in That's soccer, X-H. in soccer they yeah. don't have that designation. In soccer E-R? they have uh, the designation <laughs> of uh, built like a brick shit house. Hmm. And Ooh, the, yeah. Adama Triore of Adama wolves. Tri- Triore is a brick Ooh. shit house. Ooh, how about oh, he- here's one. Uh, Witty, uh, you were b- the only person who might know this. Do you remember Stig Tofting? No, I the, don't. Who, okay, look up Stig Tofting. Stig he played, Tofting. He was they a, played quarterback for Notre yeah. Dame the last time they won a championship. <laughs> <laughs> he, he played for, um, he played, He was a Denmark national, I want to say. Wow, uh, you've nailed yeah. it. What's his last name? Yeah. Tofting. T-O-F-T. 
T-O-F-T-I-N-G. Thank you. Not one of these guys. Guy this alley. dude's Google image oh, wow. oh, search my God. just yeah. kicked my ass. <laughs> fire hydrant. <laughs> just, wow. I'm giving my wallet just to the Just from Google. the shoulders up, it looks like a fire hydrant. <laughs> Look at this Google man. Google search shit. can take all my money. <laughs> You're giving yeah. him your cash, Mike. I don't want any problem. <laughs> How do you remember this person? Stig talking. I, he uh, he played for the Danish team in ni- in the ninety eight World Cup, but I became obsessed with him because he was fire hydrant essentially. <laughs> and then and I and I bought a Stig Tofting jersey and used to wear it around New York. And then I think he was arrested for domestic abuse or something, and I had to get rid of the jersey. Just looking at this guy gave me cauliflower ear. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even a wrestler. <laughs> I think he played for like Man U for a year or something. He played in the Premier League. I want to say for played for some Bolton, period of time for Bolton. Bolton, okay. two thousand and two. That's funny. That when, sounds it, right. That's funny how major tournaments introduce you to certain characters. Like we, uh, Mike and I, have been obsessed with this guy that comes off the bench for Morocco, Walid Shadira, who is like an insane person. Comes off the bench, runs in behind, gets like five great chances a game, and forgets to shoot. Like there's there's just something about major tournaments, man. Two yellows like, on these, the way out. Like these people are in your life for three weeks, and you like you remember them forever, as is the case with with Stig Tufting. Stig, Stig Tufting. <laughs> Ray Rice, mm. Fire Hydrant. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Do we have to go there? We just yeah, did. Really, I did. Hmm. How about more current? J.K. Dobbins, Fire Hydrant. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Stugatz, I meant to ask you, why are all of your player references cut off at 1999? Like, if, <laughs> Last like time you've I got, watched sports. I mean, like, <laughs> you're, you're, like, you know the fullback from the Cowboys in the late 70s. I do. Robert but, Newhouse. Yeah. But why? Why don't you have more modern players? Like Daryl Johnston. That's, that's just more modern. Moose. Moose. Yeah, Moose. Yeah, the last fullback time is... Moose played football. Right. 25 years from now, I'm going to pull Jared Goff out of my ass and someone's going to laugh. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yes. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yes. I mean, what do you want from me? Uh, and modern the fu- references. The fullback uh, is dead. I mean, The fullback is not dead. Not it's the, the fullback is dead. If anything, not a dead word, yet. sir. If anything, the, the fullback is having a comeback. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Kyle check fire. Uh, Alec fire Ingold. Yeah, but he's not there your he traditional is. fullback. Yes, he is. No, he's not. He goes out. They're he catches a passes. Power eye, though. Moose never caught a pass. Ah, the power <laughs> eye. Come on. <laughs> Kirby Patrick Puckett. Ricard. Ooh, Kirby Puckett. Yeah, bowling ball. Yeah, bowling, bowling ball. ball yeah. Yeah. Is Kyler Murray anything? He's a fire hydrant. Out for the Stop year. Stop it. He's skinny. He's a fire hydrant. Kyler see- Murray is skinny. He is not skinny. Chris, he's when you put pads on, a little fire hydrant. Hmm. When I think of fire hydrant, I think of calves. Really? Like you gotta have pro- body. I think of yeah. upper body. Pronounced calves. Hmm. I think of thighs and torso. Same. Mm. Yeah. Maybe a square. The shoulders. hydrant part of the fire hydrant. What about mm. Alejandro Kirk? Do you guys know Tristan him? Tristan Thompson. The Blue Jays? Mm. <laughs> no. Alejandro Kirk? Yeah. Who is that? Look him up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Greg Cody. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Place for the Blue Jays. Oh. Currently? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think so. What's Mike Sure, who is the baseball player that I would be most surprised got a giant deal in this offseason? Like, just like on the basis of I've probably never heard of them. I think all the people... Well, Brandon Nimmo, I guess, is the one that is the least well-known of the huge deal guy so far. Do you know him? No, Plays I don't. Mets. He's with the Mets. So. Brandon Nimmo got $162 million from the Jeez. Mets over... No, Chris, look up his stats, though, and see if you think he's, he's worth $162 million. I mean, he's a good player. He's not maybe $162 million worth of a good player. Like, it's crazy. He's an average player, um, right, Mike? You would say? He's better. You know, he's better than average. Slightly he walks above a lot. Average. And he, yeah. You know what the thing is about Brandon Nimmo? He has this really weird ability to get hit by pitches. His on base percentage is very high, in part because he gets hit by like 23 pitches a year. It nets you $162 million. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. It's a nice gig if you can. Get it. So he's Don Baylor, basically. <laughs> right. He's he's like yeah, mini Baylor Don Baylor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just basically an OPS between eight hundred and nine hundred. Oh, just a, yeah. Know, which that, which last year good. was a very big deal. Yeah, his OPS is OPS plus is one thirty. Yeah. Solid player. Yeah. But like Matt Olson got essentially his exact deal from the Braves. Uh, whatever it was a year ago, two years ago, and Matt Olson is a fair bit better than Brandon Nimmo is. Like the salaries seem to have gone up. 30 to 40 percent in the last 18 months uh and so he cashed in 
Good for him. But Whitney, when you look at those stats, do you see a one hundred and sixty two million dollar player? Like the like no. the salaries have gotten out of control. No, he has two yes. double digit home run seasons and right. they're sixteen and seventeen. One sixty two. And it, like for me the and, and also has a, appears to have an injury problem on the basis of having only played more than a hundred games twice in his career. Uh I for me, baseball it's like the best form of celebrity because you get to like be cheered on by fans. You get to make massive amounts of money. In his case, live in a big city and be relatively anonymous. Like Brandon Nimmo can walk down the streets of South Beach completely unperturbed. <laughs> and it sounds wonderful. It's the best form of celebrity, I think. Brandon Nimmo can walk outside of City Field in New York and Correct. be relatively undisturbed. <laughs> Get, as soon as he exits the stadium, no one knows who he is. Walking in. <laughs> Maybe on the field. Yeah. <laughs> who is that guy? It, it's it's until there's a public address now batting the shortstop, Brandon Nimmo. Yeah. People know who he is for the length of time he is at the plate. <laughs> All right. Finding Nimmo. Well done, Tony. All right, Mike. We appreciate it. Uh, have a great weekend. We will talk to you on uh, on Monday. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Glorious conversation that was of bowling balls and fire hydrants. Rusu Rutschbear. Who is, is that? A, a former Turkish goalkeeper from their 0-2 run. What is he? He has stayed with me. Just one of these random. He stayed oh, with you. Mine yeah. is uh, <laughs> one of these random World Cup characters that you only think about them when it's international soccer. Right. Rusu Rutschbear. Right. Russell Wilson, fire hydrant? Wow. Mm. Yeah. It's about 5'10", 5'11", yeah. on a good day. Do we know the difference Thick. between a fire hydrant and a bowling ball? Can we just decide as yeah, a group? Let's, let's, like let's, let's, let's set the criteria. I mean, let's a, bowling set the criteria. Ball, a bowling ball is a little bit pudgier. A fire hydrant is short, short in stature, but mm. well-built, like well-defined. Mm. Like, you know. Phil Kessel. Thighs, calves, all that. Robert Newhouse. I mean, Turkey won third place at World Cup. Get out of here. Mm. Oh. I was thinking of Michael Crone Daly from the 2012 Danish Euros team. If we're That's looking for a fire hydrant who's short and kind of jacked and Tyree kills not that, yeah, I, don't it's know, crazy. I, don't I don't know what how it we're is. playing this game. Yeah. M- MJD was perfect. Like Mike Ryan's, that but was, he was perfect. A little pudgier. Okay, but okay, but no, he, he wasn't. No, but he is. He okay, was ripped. You're thinking on NFL Network. He is the precise counterfactual on this. We need to define what? on the basis of Maurice Jones Drew mm-hmm. what is a bowling ball and what is a fire hydrant. Mm. Because he is the exact test case where I honestly think he's got a bit of both. Yeah. But if you made me say, I would say bowling ball. Agreed. Alton Tops and uh knee hot too. Basically all the O2 Turkish players. They just mm. stayed with me. Like if I don't think of you in your prime yeah. as jacked, you're a bowling ball. MJD, while of course all football players are in shape, well, I don't guys, think of him as jacked. So for me, that's a bowling ball. Do we agree that Kirby Puckett is a bowling ball? Yeah, he had a so little. That's bit, a bowling. He had a little ball. bit of a gut. Ooh, Theophanes Gekas from that Greek uh, European winning team, Gekas. Man, that dude ran a five flat forty. He's a bowling ball, Puckett, not Gekas. Stay with you. How about Michael Turner, former Charger? Oh yeah, that's a good one. Former Ooh. Falcon. That's a fire hydrant. The burner. I see him as yeah. I see him as a as a as a bowling ball. How? He because wasn't that fast. We established he, he Kirby Puckett as a bowling ball. I know yeah. Michael yeah. Turner is more Kirby Puckett than he is Austin Eckler. Philip Senderos, Swiss oh, national team. Philip Senderos. Wow. Yeah. Stay with you. Former Houston Dynamo. Yeah. Yes. Second Room straight day with a Houston Dynamo. <laughs> <reference>. <laughs> <laughs> Asamoah Jean. Oh, that's mm. that, that, that's a player who only exists for international tournaments. What game are we playing with that? With these Sh- names? Shep Messing. Oh, yeah. Stay with me. It's a good one. Yeah. Please. Giorgio Canalia. Stay now, with so me. Now, now you're just doing the NASL from 1979. The Cosmos, specifically. <laughs> yes. Kyle Beckerman. Guillermo Uchoa. Ooh. Wow. Hmm. We're playing multiple games. Yeah. We're I'm trying to figure names. out what we're the, names Mike is saying point. names yeah. I've never heard of. Yeah. So I'm just trying to figure out is that guy a fire hydrant no. or a bowling ball? I don't know. <laughs> no, we're, so we're, we're the dueling games we're playing are random players we only know from international tournaments ah. and bowling ball or fire hydrant. Gotcha. So it's <laughs> bowling ball or fire hydrant or people that Tony and Chris haven't heard of. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Ruiz. Yeah. 
Bowling ball. <laughs> he really <laughs> lashed out at me for Robert Newhouse. I want to find an NBA bowling ball. I thought we got there with Kyle Lowry. But did we say he was a fire hydrant? No, if, out if, of shape, Kyle Lowry mm-hmm. is, is a, a bowling, bowling ball. ball. Just yes. What about a tractor trailer? Mm, rest in peace. Just a tractor trailer. He was, <laughs> you have to be a guard. You have to be a guard to be a bowling ball. You have to be a That's guard. That's a good question. Well, the <laughs> reason like, why I brought up Chuck Davis. Hayes, <laughs> Big Baby Davis is a great one. Yeah. Bowling ball, right? I go for bowling ball. He can't be a fire hydrant. Chuck Hayes, former ball. Rocket Center, was like 6'4". A bowling like ball a needs to be... like a 16-pounder. It needs Extra to be large compact. It needs to be compact. Yeah, but it's the NBA, short. Stu. But it's the NBA. He's short, a short power. Foot. He's a short forward. Yeah. yeah. I guess. He's like, what, 6'5"? Nelson Valdez, from oh. Paraguay. Fernando Muslera. Tyler Bass. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Beckerman was a good one for me. Yeah. Oh, you knew that one? Yeah, I did, actually. Nice. Steve Jungle. Stay with me. You know, he had a great career in the Premier League, but I just think of him doing the robot on the international stage. Jungle? Peter, Peter Crouch. Oh. Excellent. <laughs> Ricardo Clark. Oh, now we're just hey. doing the 2010 World Cup team. Edson <laughs> Buttle. Woody, I love you. <laughs> big Perk. Fire Hydrant? Wow. Too big? Uh, I go bowling ball for Kendrick Perkins. Yeah, yeah. He's six too big. What about Tim big? Hardaway? Timmy? No. The dad? Ooh. The dad I see him as a fire hydrant for sure. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. of the dad. That's what yeah. I meant. Timmy, I meant senior. Timmy Senior, fire hydrant. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Gucci on Yebu. Tim Reigns. Oh, yes. Gooch. <laughs> Rock Reigns. Who's the greatest uh, Cuban footballer? Is it Alonzo? Yeah, it was Valdo Alonzo, probably, yeah. right? Alonzo, probably. No, I'd say O'Neal Hernandez scored in the Premier League. Oh, oh that's fair. That's right. Yeah, but then I, I went back to his Twitter history. It was very problematic. <laughs> I I had to forget it? about him. Yeah, he was yeah. like super pro Castro. He's he's still a Cuban citizen. He can't not be. No, I understood, but I couldn't celebrate it for Norwich. Definitely I just couldn't. Not. I don't even know who it is, and we can't celebrate it. Yeah. Hey, Tom. I get it. I get it. But the dude got to go see his family at some point, you know? Uh, I understand. But, but no, Hernandez you want my doesn't have an, an MLS defend. Cup to his name. So, mm. I don't know. I don't even... Where is O'Neal Hernandez now? He's still at Norwich. Is he? Uh, in, in the championship. I'm almost sure, yeah. Mm. No, I think he went back to the German team. Really? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, Hernandez. It says he's at Norwich. All right, then he's still at Norwich. Yeah, he was at Boro thought, last yeah. year on loan. Did not think this is where we would where we would start. Uh, Christian <laughs> Polanco and, El- and Alexis Guerrero of the Cooligans. When I say to you, name a player that you only think of because they were in your life for three weeks in an international tournament. What's the one player that immediately comes to hit, comes to your mind? Uh, okay. So, 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 so and can life. you can you knock off Russo <laughs> Rechbear as king of the mountain? Because uh, Turkey's O2 keeper Russo Rechbear is right now my king of this game. Right, right now mine is Asamoah Gyan. Oh, knock this out! Um, <laughs> this is a tough one. Yeah, let's see. Only, only, only for a tournament. Yeah, it's just like this one player had an international tournament that you remember. And therefore, like, and that's the only thing that you know them for. It's not like they had a European club career that you're aware of. Like, I imagine for a lot of people in Europe, like Guillermo Ochoa, the Mexico goalkeeper, it's like this player who only exists in World Cups. He doesn't exist in the four years in between. Ya- Jan, Sommer is a, Jan Sommer is a good one. Yeah, that's true. For a lot of people. I don't can know I, how, how much they're following Gladbach. Can I say Kyle Beckerman? <laughs> Yes. I, said, I, I offered him up as an American <laughs> contestant in this game. It's great to see you. Also, um, when we were talking, we were talking about great Cuban soccer players. Real Madrid have an active Dominican, so that's something. Do they? Yeah, Mariano. That's right. Oh, okay. yeah. I always yeah. thought Inter Miami should just go after him. Whenever I hear an active Dominican, I'm like, "What? He's got a dating profile? He's hit, he's a bit, he's a hit on Tinder? What's going Actually, on?" <laughs> Mike Mike Ruiz just sounded like a like a police in the Bronx. We got an active Dominican. <laughs> we got, we got an active Look Dominican. Look out, everybody! Got an active Dominican. Uh, fellas, it's it's great to see you uh, here on the precipice of an all time World Cup final. As uh, I pointed out earlier, one of the the commenters on Morally Abhorrent said, "It's best player in the world versus 
best player of all time. It's a, the marquee names entering this tournament. Uh, Mbappe, with a, a, a stronger supporting cast, uh, has come back to the World Cup final where he can win his second at the age of 23. That's a hard one to get, and he's going up against Messi, who is trying to get the elusive one. The The drama surrounding this, the pressure, is pretty unparalleled compared to previous ones, and the stakes are always ratcheted. Can't get much higher in the men's game. Uh, what are you expecting come Sunday? Alexis, we'll, we'll begin with you, because you could already feel the tension. You could already feel the mega stars in that tunnel. It's got to be a, a moment for the ages. It's tough because I picked France to win. I love the vibes. I love Vape. I love, love Giroud. I love everything about this French team, but the absolute rabid Ronaldo hater inside me wants Messi <laughs> to win this just so I can point at everyone who's ever worn a Manchester United shirt and laugh and laugh and everyone with Cristiano Ronaldo as their profile photo laugh and laugh <laughs> in their face the <laughs> argument is over you are one of the greats but you ain't the great you ain't the goat baby yeah, the, the the there's something about the the story. The and we we were talking about this yesterday on our show, but the end of the movie needs the the, the finale, the climax needs to be Messi lifting that World Cup trophy. Um, even though I think it it'll be just so so difficult. This is just, you know, Argentina were were Moroccan yesterday, man. They really were supporting <laughs> Morocco. Uh, and uh, you know that obviously would have been the the you know the better opponent I guess uh, for them, but this is a, a you know I, I think France has to be the favorite, but very Argentina have a, a a very very good chance in winning this. They've had a pretty good tournament outside of their opening match against Saudi Arabia. I think I I, I want to follow up on the on the Ronaldo v Messi point because I actually over the course of my soccer supporting life. I, I kind of found the bandwagon jumpers on Barcelona in the early 2000s to be fairly ob objectionable. And now we have seen in these last few years uh, the, the thinning of the herd of Barcelona fans because they used to be omnipresent. But now I'm, I'm with you, Alexis. For me, the, the Ronaldo fanboy, I just I I so I so want to see them root for France for these 90 minutes and be disappointed as this argument ends because this argument ends and then. I think we should probably be a bit more considering of Pele. I know that like that's kind of an old thing to do, um, but I, I I think we should be more considering of Pele. But man, I I have fallen in love with the messy narrative these last three weeks. Like I, for me, bro, it's destined we've moved past for him. Pele. But, we've moved but, past Pele. Okay, Pele but, dusty, but, bro. But, but why? <laughs> but why? Why have we moved past it's Pele? Over. Why? It's over because you want to go to the library and get micro fiche. To find out what Pele did, bro. <laughs> just, just watch the keepers. Anytime you watch a, a Pele I will say, highlight, watch wait. a keeper. The, like t you need actual real. You need actual yeah. heavy real to see Pele highlight. Some of that stuff is in Sanskrit, bro. We <laughs> owe it's over, dog. You got your flowers, my G. You were the only pay. You were the only soccer player anyone in America knew for about forty years. You good? Uh -huh. All right. This is melee. Pele and pay melee. Messi's time. Pele melee. Yeah. <laughs> this is Messi's time. And by the way, I'm born and raised in Newark. I can't even go back to the Portuguese section safely because of all the Ronaldo hate I'm giving. And I can't wait. I can't wait to never be able to go back there. I was always a, a big Ronaldo guy when it came to the debate. And then Link Sander Miami might have changed things a little bit. <laughs> but also uh, Ronaldo forcing his way out and just making a mess of it. Uh, for his national team, too. I think that there was a lot of shrapnel from his a actions. And I, I do think... And we should keep in mind that he's had a lot going on in his personal life, and, and this could be just some weird manifestation of, of grief. But uh, I really do think he's hurt how he'll be looked upon uh, by how this is totally erupted into flames at, at Manchester United. He was always held in high regard. I think he will be to a degree, but it will be part of his legacy there. And him going out on the bench, making a mess of things for his teammates at this World Cup, losing one of the great upsets to Morocco after they had put in such a stellar performance with him not out there starting. I, I think a lot for his legacy has been slightly diminished, and it's not necessarily unfair that he's older than Messi throughout the entire time of this debate, but I do think Messi puts it in the rearview mirror 
where everyone can kind of collectively say, and I know social media is very toxic and people will refuse to admit that they're wrong, but I think that the debate is over if Messi does this, at least for our generation, Christian. Right, and and I think the, I mean, for someone who up, up, appears to care so much about their their sort of their ego, how they present themselves, uh, all this stuff going on, you know, doing this interview with Piers Morgan. So his his public image is something that's very important to him. But he, you know, he will be remembered in this World Cup as the guy who didn't really start every game, who was a bit of a concern, maybe a liability, maybe he he, he hurt the team. And Messi is living uh, the, this story that I think every footballer in the world would love to have, where their country absolutely adores them. And, you know, th there was that, that reporter that that was talking to Messi and, and simply saying, hey, e even if you don't win the World Cup, you are so important to our country. Thank you for everything that you've done. You're not really seeing that with Ronaldo. And and regardless of what <laughs> of what the, the, the you know debate online is or whatever, I think Messi can sleep a little peacefully being like, "Hey, you know what? I I did my best and and my country has some gratitude uh for that." And so when it comes to the public image debate, Messi got it. But I, I do think that this game on Sunday kind of comes down to the walkers, uh, as as I would call them, Messi and Mbappe, uh, because neither of them puts in a ton of effort <laughs> defensively. And I think France were a little bit exposed in the game against Morocco because there's this one wing where there is only one defender instead of two, and Morocco just kept going at that wing. So how how do you actually see, from a soccer standpoint, this game playing out, Alexis? How dare you ask Messi or Mbappe to defend? <laughs> Who are you? What okay, are you, Jose Mourinho. Okay, no, hang on a second. <laughs> Lionel Messi is thirty-five. Okay, you can understand why he doesn't defend. Kylian Mbappe is twenty-three. He's got the legs. Like he can do, a, like be in a shape. Can he be in a shape? Is that too much to ask? <laughs> But if he if he does that, then he can't do that Mbappe match. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He's twenty three. His take on ability is better Dude, than anybody's. He, he can do both. He can do both. He's young enough to do both. Come on. The, he, that man is about to win, is potentially winning a second world cup. I know. You want him to defend. I That's want him to do a little bit more. I want him to do a little bit more. Here's I I honestly think it does come down to France's ability to defend. Uh, it Messi. Everyone around him wants him to win, but it's almost like a little bit of bedlam trying to get him the ball and hope and get in a position where he'll either pass to you where magic is created. Uh, there's a little bit more of a structure uh, that I see in France. There's a little bit of more of a, of a team unity that I see in France when they're in the final third, where in, uh, you know, when it gets to Argentina, it's like all hands on deck. Don't mess this up for Messi. You know what I mean? Uh, so I do think it will come down to the ability of that hap of, of that sort of succeeding versus France's ability to stop that from happening. But multiple times throughout this entire competition, I've sat there and said, if N'Golo Conte was here, this wouldn't even be a competition. Yeah. Uh, but, Ngolo Conte, in but N'Golo Conte is there in the form of Antoine Griezmann, of all people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean... I heard he plays reggaeton in the uh, in the dressing room. He's, so I'm he's from like, Uruguay. He identifies as Uruguay. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to like Griezmann a little more. Uh, I personally, I just don't think I don't think France should or will get in the way of destiny. And I think it's going to come down to their inability to defend. And we've seen this. We saw this in the last match, man. When Argentina gets going. Dude, ain't nobody stopping them. And if they can catch, if they can catch that momentum, oh, it's going to get carried. But both away. teams, both teams have those moments. Where it's like for five minutes they're unplayable, and and they just like they're a supernova, and the rest of the game is just sort of them at a very normal pace, or sort of very normal for international soccer, and then like something happens where like in these in these quick moments, like honestly, France's goals yesterday don't really come from much. It's not like it's not born out of some you know inherent strategy. It's well, Mbappe gets the ball and he attracts four defenders. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. deflected shots <laughs> result, and then for I think you're underselling Griezmann's playmaking ability yeah. g quite a bit there, because especially I understand what you're talking about. The gravitational pull from Mbappe is immense, but their their midfield is quality. Griezmann's having the best stretch of games I've ever seen him really play, and Giroud 
can do some of the things in creating some of the space and individual matchups. Yes, he'll drive you crazy because he'll miss some sitters, but he also just is a goal getter. One of those vintage strikers that all of a sudden feels like a rarity. It's not all Mbappe, and the constant threat of Mbappe is a huge part of their success, but I, I don't want you to undersell the performance from Griezmann because Griezmann, for me, if France win, Griezmann should lay claim to player of the tournament. If Argentina win... Messi can lay claim to player of the tournament. It all depends on what kind of performance and maybe who lifts the cup. But I think Griezmann has been the most consistently excellent player for France. And that includes Mbappe, who's been stellar, who they certainly don't find themselves in this position without him. But he's had some dips. He goes missing at times. He doesn't put forth that honest effort on both sides of the ball, as you highlighted. Griezmann, for me, has been otherworldly. Yeah, I I would add that the you know Woody, when you were mentioning the that second half um for uh you know between uh, France and Morocco i thought france looked a little nervous and a little weak i mean there was you know morocco who we know are not the highest uh, uh, quality team in the world <gasps> made <laughs> made uh, i think they scared france a, a little bit and 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 like you said the goals that france got we're a little bit lucky. I took a little bit of magic from Mbappe, of of course, but the deflections and then you know uh, players being in the right place at the right time. But they're not. If they show that you know they they had to switch their midfielders because they were getting eaten alive in uh, in that second half. And I think that's if they are in that situation in the final against Argentina, they're not escaping without giving up a goal. So I I I do feel that the 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 narrative and the storyline, not just for Messi, but like for the the ten players around him. Like we've interviewed Argentinian players that that say that you know they care more about Messi winning a World Cup than Argentina winning a World Cup. They, this is how much respect they have for this man, and every player on the pitch is going to play with that level of, uh, I think, inspiration and pressure. And that might just be the edge in 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 this game. Even though I do think France is better, but the the heart that Argentina going to be playing with is going to be immense. But I I also think to to that point that point about Argentinian players wanting to win for Messi more than Argentina or themselves. I think it only further goes to show how much the internet and sports uh, discourse has completely altered our brains. Or it's like, like we, like we would rather solve the Messi Ronaldo debate than win the World Cup for our country. Like I, I, I really think that's what it is. Because it's getting crazy, bro. You see these ESPN FC tweets? They're, oh. they're, they're begging for engagement, bro. Yeah, we gotta of, stop most it. Of, most now. divisive force on the planet, ESPN FC's admin. Yeah, it's I, terrible. But I didn't yeah. think that it would that that debate would infiltrate even Portugal's response to them blowing it. Uh, against, right. against Morocco. They were all blaming Argentinian refs. Argentina has right. nothing to do with this. What are you talking about? <laughs> they thought on the international scale, their game was unfairly refereed because of the Messi-Ronaldo debate. <laughs> bro, they're saying the refs were Antifa, bro. Yeah. They got anything they can do <laughs> to not admit they lost. We got to stop these these woke referees <laughs> never giving us calls. <laughs> Just a t- Pepe, Pepe missed a, a, an absolute chance late in the game, and he totally, what about Chicago does in, in the postgame press? Dude, I, I love it. I love it because the pettiness is way more important than the championship. This isn't yeah. 1950 anymore, bro. We get it. You celebrate. We're going to see it all on social media anyway. What's important for me is who can I roast in the group chat? Okay, <laughs> and there's a couple Portuguese dudes. Oh, and by the way, to Christian's point, there's no one in Portugal that's trying to win it for Ronaldo, bro. No, no one. No one's talking about Ronaldo except for Ronaldo. You don't even like him. Well, yeah. I guess I guess I guess that's the difference between them, though, right? Is that Messi is a far more collaborative figure than like Ronaldo has been so no, much no, about no. himself. It's just Messi is a lot more quiet about his divisiveness, whereas Ronaldo wears it on his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, no like, one's talking about the Panama Papers. Remember that? Messi was in that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Messi obviously has a lot of influence with the national team. They're really great players that do not feature. They're they're managers that That's didn't true. stick around. Messi Messi lets it be known. He just yeah. 
prefers a more covert way than he, he sitting down he, with Piers Morgan. I think there's there's a nice little middle lane there for, for a lot of folks. You don't have to right. you don't have to go Messi, all the way. Messi is Lebronish. Me, yeah. yeah, Messi's Lebronish in the way that he he wields his power. hundred percent. But like but to to Alexis's point though, like Ronaldo has done such a bad job of like managing his public personality that not even his Portugal teammates are really that exercised about winning a World Cup for him. This was so obviously his last World Cup and it didn't seem like anyone was saying that. No one was saying, "Oh, we got to win one for Ronaldo." Like he, like he is not this galvanizing figure. In Think the same about way. the lasting image of him walking off that that pitch, whether he was crying or or laughing, was hard right. to determine well, because he was, of what he's of got face. going on in his face <laughs> and, and years of just numbing some of the muscle there. But no one was consoling him there yeah. he was doing it all by himself and most people yeah. watching were laughing like like the like there is not a lot of respect for ronaldo as this figure I, Un- unless you're like unless you have ronaldo's picture in your avatar I, I feel i feel bad for how it all ended but i i see like i see it and it's just you're kind of to blame for yeah this most re- it should have been a celebration of his career, the way that we've seen so many legendary figures go off on the international game. The only person that really botched it prior to was Zidane. Even if people go out on the group stage, it's still like, we'll clap it up. Figo will have his exit. Nedved will have his his exit. And Ronaldo, I know it was a crushing defeat, but he didn't have that hero send-off. And he had a chance late in that game, too, to score a goal. He was in on goal, and he didn't score. Mm-hmm. But And and I, and I would add that the probably the biggest reason for it is that he's just he's just not a good teammate i mean that we have so much evidence of that and if you it like even if it's a, an office environment if you're just not a good co-worker you're not gonna get you know a, a, a party in the break room on your last day we don't care if you're leaving and that, that's yeah. essentially you know th- there was a, a tweet from um bethany balser she plays for um ol rain and um she and, and she I pointed out she's like i don't care how good of a player you are uh, if you're not a good teammate, I don't want I don't want to play with you. I don't want to be, I don't want you on my team. And that's you know to to, to have so much uh, uh you know we see his body of work, but to see so many instances over and over of him just being a poor uh, uh you know poor sportsmanship, not a good not a good teammate. Uh, at some point, people are going to see that. People are going to notice that. And 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 I think we're seeing the 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 outcome of of all his choices throughout his career. Uh, Alexis and Christian do such a great job with the Cooligans, and they've been working really hard throughout this World Cup. We're going to go ahead and put a link to the Cooligans in this episode description. Please support them. I cannot wait to hear your take on this upcoming World Cup final. Make sure to check out all their YouTube stuff. They've been tremendous partners throughout this and only getting better and stronger right now. It's a great time to be hitting your stride, gentlemen, as we uh, walk up here to the a World Cup filled with storylines for our lifetime it's never quite been this juicy so gentlemen thank you so much for joining us and i can't wait to see what you do in the aftermath of this match thank you Uh, so much thank you uh also can you ask dan if i could borrow some money also and and before and if we're i don't i I just want to make sure i say this witty uh your episode about grant was absolutely beautiful thank you Uh, beautiful uh thank you so much for doing that uh obviously uh, this world cup is memorable for a lot of reasons but that is a, a very a difficult tragedy and we're not never going to be able to forget this world cup obviously for uh for you know because uh because of grant so uh i just wanted to make sure uh, i let you know that because it was absolutely incredible and, and beautiful i appreciate it guys yeah we appreciated your words on on the matter as well gentlemen a uh, tough time we'll be seeing you soon and again check out the cool agains and uh, if you're not subscribed to them go ahead and do that they're also a part of the levitard and friends network so if you subscribe to that rss feed you'll get all the great contributions that they've had throughout this World Cup and onward and upward because we kind of hit the ground running towards the holiday season. We're right back into in the club seasons and it'll be a great opportunity for people that have gotten into the game because of this World Cup to really get the bug and continue on following. And the Cooligans will be right there with you, right in sidecard, making you laugh the entire way. So thank you, gentlemen. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's update the polls. Brought to you by Tommy John. It's at Levitard Show on Twitter. Let's clap it out for some polls. We're yeah. clapping it out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Clap it out. All right. For Tommy John. Yeah. Oh, oh TJ. I, love love my jammies. Yeah. Thanks. Is an 8 p.m. nap just sleeping? No. Jessica? Who took that nap? Oh, it was you, Jess. I did. <laughs> 8 o'clock. Wow. Uh, 89.5% of the audience said yes. There is nothing more disorienting than waking up from an 8 p.m. nap. From any nap. 
from it's any weird. nap. No, no. I mean, if it like if the sun is still out, you'd be like, oh, well, the sun is still out. No. But 8 p.m. and you wake up at 1045. Like, what do you what do you do? The most jarring nap is when you sneak home after work to get in a quick hour before you pick up your kid and you wake up and you think that you've missed picking right. up your kid. <laughs> oh, I'm you, like, you think after you've overslept? Nap. You've like, done it though, right? You have overslept. No, no, I've right? heard of people that did it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up from a nap during the France Morocco game it, around half That's time. That's what soccer does to you. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> No, you know what? It's what true though because I watch Premier League on Saturday mornings usually, and that's like I started watching it when I would be hungover more often than not on Saturdays, and so I'd kind of watch it and fall back asleep while watching it. So now every time I hear soccer, I fall asleep, um, which is unfortunate because I do love the beautiful game. It is but, one of those sports uh, that kind of uh, golf is obviously yeah, the number baseball, one napping sport, yeah, and I love yeah. golf. I'm not saying it. I'm not Just trying mellow. to be critical. There was. Right. But, I swear to God, there was 10 minutes of that game where the Fox announcers just laid out and didn't talk. The just, ambient noise of just a soccer game going on. Yeah, all the horns. Yeah. I was, yeah. Oh, I was so Baseball out of Baseball game. That's one, of, that's one of John Strong's techniques, the, the main announcer the for Fox. Suit, you could he, say. He, hey. Hey. Ooh. He, 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 does, he, does love, he does love to lay out. I didn't like it. So, like, you, 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 uh, you, you fall asleep. It, it's very easy. I would say Oof. golf, definitely number one. The Masters in particular. Early, early in the 4 p.m. games after the Witcher. Oh. Oh, great time. Great she didn't time. like it, Roy. <laughs> but Roy did. Witty, how's did. your laying out skills in broadcasting? Um, it's it's something that I have to probably be better at because I I is it something that you're consciously like let me lay out here yes, at times? Yes, but also like I'm some usually working with people who like it's it has to be like a coordinated effort. You have to like look at your partner. Ray like, Hudson, not too not too easy to lay out for him. <laughs> no, no. But that's also like not you're you're not coming to Ray Hudson for a broadcast that lays out. Mm. Uh, but I mean uh <laughs> but yeah and it's also because you're going I'm going between radio and TV. So like when I'm going to TV, it's like oh I need to shut up. Like I need radio, to, uh, they don't lay out right, on radio. No, right? there's no point. Yeah, like, no, yeah, yeah. you guys it's not freak helpful. out if someone inhales for five seconds on this show because there has to be like the <laughs> air has, has to be to constant be chatter. Yes. What are you talking so, about? It's crazy. You there's, never there's never silence. There's never silence. It's so no, annoying. We can't. What? When I started what's, this what's job, annoying? I thought I was doing a podcast because you're not on radio anymore. And I realized like two weeks in, I'm like, holy shit, now I have to learn how to do radio. They don't let you breathe when you're talking. You have to get your whole point out in one sentence or else someone cuts you off. What's next on the polls? Is he see? You see? <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I, mean, that, that, you, I was you, counting you, there. You were counting on your fingers in five seconds. So so we like had five no minutes. idea how many sausage fingers he was going to count to. <laughs> right. We had no predetermined Only have number. ten of them, Jess. Gary Blau would have had a fit. Are the Jags frisky? Gary Blau. <laughs> Gary Blau. Gary Blau. That's a joke only God, four of us God, get. God but rest holy his soul. shit, it's funny. God rest his soul. All right, yeah, rest in power, Gary. <laughs> Are they, like a hunter. Are the, it does sound like a punchy. You're right. Are the Jags frisky? Uh, 76% of the audience said yes. They are have frisky. A, have a worse record than they should, the Jags. They do. It's been a disappointing season for been. the Jags. I can't believe I'm saying also, that. Also, looking at the NFL standings and seeing the Lions at 6-7 and seven is like, it's perturbing. It doesn't make any sense. It's weird because when you look, when I looked at the uh, Jets schedule before the season started, I circled that, like victory. Okay? Yes. And now I'm terrified it's of them. The, it's the, I hate it, them. It's the stupidity in yes. the Mike and the Mad Dog WLWL game. because yes. Stupidity? Everyone. It, it, <laughs> everyone <laughs> Everyone looks at Detroit before the season and puts a W next to their name. But as it got closer, I started to become more terrified. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm dead. We're going to lose. Uh, when you can get a crowd to chant pillowcase, can you pass up the opportunity? <laughs> I didn't. I feel like yes, but <laughs> I think the this audience is, probably disagrees. This is one of the things that I missed. What is this story? Well, at Moss Miami, the, the, the <laughs> Sheets and Giggles guy. <laughs> By the way, this weekend, last chance to get Sheets and Giggles and get it there by by Christmas. Just wanted to throw this that out weekend. there. This weekend, wow, that's, that's get, a pretty turnaround. If you get, order, you get well it in done, this Chris. weekend, right. we got you by Christmas. Mm -hmm. But they were handing out pillowcases to throw at Moss, so at one point we got a pillowcase chant going. I saw Billy went body surfing. That was yeah. shocking. Mm. What, I'm what, still what happened? What, what, what went over shocking. him? What happened to him? Is he okay? Well, he's not oh. here, is he? I don't know how well, yeah. who who convinced him to do that because it didn't seem like something Billy would do. Who he was, was the, try, he was trying no, to get Billy, me to do it, and I said I I'm not doing it. So Billy I mean, has B Billy has these impulses sometimes, or he forgets that he's overly cautious, and is like I'm yes. just going to do something wild. Like he took an actual golf swing with an actual golf ball here in the studio. <laughs> he's once. really reckless. Oh, it's like no. his it's his outlet is in these studios with balls or like a bat in your hand. He, yeah, 
He likes to just no throw some just breaking things. You walk into a room and he's just like, here you go, Chris. And he like throws he, it really hard. He, he like took the bucket of death and like threw it up in the air and all the helmets went everywhere and like 15 face masks broke because he punted the bucket. Yeah, he of punted death. it. Yeah, That's, he didn't throw yeah. it. He punted I it. I just love that being Billy just letting loose <laughs> right. in a studio I'm with a bucket out of these mini helmets. 79% of the audience said no on Pillow Kiss. Should Jared Goff win the MVP over Jalen Hurts because Stugat says so? This is a big one. Uh oh. Did it on a bad team? 66% of the audience said yes. Well, there it is. I'm gonna, it, I'm, is does he have odds for MVP? There's no way. You don't there's think no so? Way. No. There's All no right. way. How could you? There's no way. Uh, Jared no, Goff? No, Jared Goff. Not with all not, the candidates yeah. out there. There like, are 13 candidates that have odds, and he is not one of them. Who's the 13th? Like Micah who's... Parsons okay. at uh, plus 30,000. Hmm. So that's 3,000. Is that 3,000 to one? Little flyer, Chris? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> right. What's Jason Kelsey at? J- Jason Kelsey? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you missed RG, that one. RG3 yeah. said he should be the MVP. Jason Kelsey? Jason Kelsey. Doesn't even have odds. Wow. Jalen I mean, Hurts why minus, would he? <laughs> Jalen Hurts minus 175. Mahomes at plus 200. Why is Mahomes just like... It, it, this is the Jordan thing. This is the Jordan... Like, Jordan doesn't actually have that oh, no, many Jaylen MVPs. Oh, no. Jalen Hurts deserves to be in that Over conference. Mahomes? Well, this year. For this year, I know, but like, it. But that's too much of a... like. We're overly emphasizing this season... When like Mahomes is just having an unbelievable season, but it just feels normal to him. Like it, it, well, is, it is normal like, to him. Patrick Mahomes is the MVP of the league every you know, year. I understand I mean, what you're I mean, saying. I, I think so. Right. How but many, occasionally many, Charles Barkley, they feel bad right. for him. So he gets an MVP. It's not even bad. It's just, it's what you're saying. It's a narrative story thing where we're surprised by the Eagles and we're giving Jalen Hurts the credit. I mean, it could be like maybe it's Burrow. No, yeah, could have been fair. Tua for a while. Michael Jordan won five MVPs. He should have won it every year. We know, but he won six titles. Like, yeah, it's not like he's short for MVPs, but but it feels like he should have won it every year. He probably should have won it. But every it can't. Year. Just, to Chris's point, Mahomes is the best player in the NFL it, every year. It can't just be the person that we think is the best, though. It's the best season. Who had the best season it's this the year? Most valuable player to their team, and obviously it's Patrick Mahomes. Mm. Yeah, mounds. sounds mm. like capitulation. Jason Kelsey, on your parts, though, too. to the Eagles, so. Mm. I mean, Jalen Hurts is going to win MVP, word? right? Well, there's still five games left. There's still a month left of the season, so. That's a good point. Yeah. Is Joe Flacco at this stage something you think you want until you get it? <laughs> there's never a scenario. Who thinks they want like Joe Flacco? I candy. thought I did, I, and then I got it, and yeah. I didn't want it anymore. No, you didn't. Yeah. Yes, I did. You're just infatuated by names. I mean, Mike White's ribs were mangled. <laughs> oh, man. Mike, Mike White, though. That hit. Which one? Turned into mush. No, but that there was the, two of them. No, that but were the one bad. where Matt Milano drilled him, and you see Which like like a lawn like chair. Yeah, yeah like his body yeah. is a parabola. It was bad. I don't like. I don't like that. You didn't listen to the uh, thing. I had uh, Tony's top five. The Buffalo Bills. Let me see if I can find it here. The Buffalo Bills defense should be arrested for attempted murder. Ooh. I saw that Matt Milano is uh, is missed the first two days of Bills practice this week, hoping he misses the game against the Dolphins. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Wishing for an injury. Classy. Weird. Classy. Classy. No. no. The injury already happened. The injury already happened. Hoping that it lingers yep. a little longer than it may mm. have. Lingering. It's a gag. Mm-hmm. Nice save. Mm-hmm. Well done by you. It's a good teammate right there. 76% uh, percent of the audience said yes. Has Brendan Fraser been, Fraser. Mis- <laughs> been mispronouncing his own name his whole life? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of asking, have we been mispronouncing his name? It's his fault. Yeah, you did that to me when I started. (laughs) Where are you from? (laughs) 80% of the audience said yes. Those are the polls brought to you by Tommy Judd.